Protests against the government and the monarchy have been held in the Thai capital Bangkok today. Protesters are demanding greater accountability from the monarchy after it emerged the king had transferred the crown assets to himself, increasing his wealth enormously. An under pressure government has responded by invoking the country's strict less majest laws and charging at least 12 protest leaders with defaming the monarchy. Now, a lot of the anger is directed against the current king, Maha Vajira Longkorn, who spends most of his time here in Germany. His long stays have become a headache for Berlin, with the government being questioned by the opposition on whether he actually conducts state business from here. The government has said this would be unacceptable. For months, pro-democracy protesters in Thailand have been trying to send a message to the king. Reform our country and your monarchy. But the man they're addressing has often been absent, thousands of kilometers away, in fact. While protests raged on the streets of Bangkok, the Thai monarch spent much of his time in Germany, in a luxury hotel in the southern Bavarian Alps. His extended stays in the quaint area have put the German government in a bind. Berlin has been trying to determine whether the king conducts state affairs from his Bavarian hideaway. The foreign minister has stated that that would be a deal breaker for Germany's hospitality. Obviously, I'm also watching the Thai king's behavior in Germany. We've not just been monitoring this in recent weeks, we are monitoring this long term. If there are things that we consider to be illegal, there will be immediate consequences. But that's easier said than done. A parliamentary investigation has found that Germany has limited legal options because the king enjoys diplomatic protections like other visiting heads of state, even if he's there on private business. It's caused frustration among lawmakers who commissioned the research. The left party, Sevim Dadelen, had this to say on Twitter. Anyone who, like the Thai king along with a military junta, brutally knocks down the democracy movement, shouldn't be rewarded with a visa for a luxurious long-term stay in Germany by the federal government. It appears Germany has just one option to take action against the king, and that's using a decades-old international treaty on diplomatic relations. Parliamentary researchers said Berlin can declare the king a persona non grata, or unacceptable person, and expel him from the country. But that option was described as a last resort. It also carries the risk of a diplomatic escalation of a political drama that Germany wanted no part in. For now, there's less pressure on German politicians. In mid-October, the king returned to Thailand, to the joy of his royalist supporters. His critics are hoping he'll finally address their grievances and not return to his hideaway in the Bavarian mountains. Many in Germany are hoping for the same. Felix Hajduk is a senior associate at the German Institute for International and Security Affairs with Southeast Asia as the focus area of his research. Felix, welcome. Now, there have been somewhat strong words from the Foreign Minister Heiko Maas, yet it appears, according to the parliamentary investigation at least, that there isn't much the government can do about the Thai king here in Germany. How do we read this? Well, I read it as an interplay of international affairs, basically, and domestic affairs. And actually, in my view, that's most certainly the case in, in most foreign policy making and here as well. So on the one hand, you have German media outlets report, reporting very critically on the Thai monarch's extended visits to Germany, as well as on his role in current Thai affairs. Plus, you have add to that uh, increased scrutiny by the opposition in the parliament in the Bundestag. So that domestically has put pressure and continues to put pressure on the government in Berlin to act. And on the other hand, you have the demonstrations in Thailand, including those taking place in front of the German embassy, actually, in Bangkok, calling on Berlin to act as well while at the same time the current Thai government is, is cracking down on, on those pro-democracy protesters. 
So this is how I read the events surrounding this issue, uh, basically as the interplay of domestic and international factors. However, I would say with regards to the future developments, I'd say uh, more depends on the developments in Thailand right. rather than what the, the domestic pressures in Germany. I think much de will depend on how uh, events will unfold in Thailand in the future. We'll come to that in a minute, but what is the wider geostrategic lens with which Germany is looking at this whole affair? Well, there's the, the geostrategic context is marked by an intensifying Sino-American rivalry in the context of this power shift towards Asia that, that many people have been talking about for, for years now to the whole of Asia, not just to China. So Asia is increasingly important geostrategically and geoeconomically, the latter especially to a trading state like Germany. And at the same time, uh, Berlin has for a long, for, for quite some time, equated China with Asia. China, po Asia policy was basically China policy and, and vice versa. So this over-dependence on China, especially economically, is now seen uh, as a challenge for Berlin. And Berlin now, in the context of also these new Indo-Pacific guidelines, seeks diversification, seeks new partners, especially in Southeast Asia. Um, and for example, the planned EU free trade agreement with Thailand is one indicator of this. Um, so, and at the same time, you have the military-led Thai government uh, since the coup in 2014 moving ever closer to, to China uh, due to what they perceive to be uh, unjust criticism of their internal affairs by Western States and so on and so forth. So I say this, this conundrum is the is geo strategic context we're we're dealing with at the moment with regards to um, uh, German Thai affairs. Right. Briefly, Felix, if you can, how do you see this playing out in the future if protests continue in Thailand? Well, I think short term, not so much. As long as the king is in Thailand, I think this will take um, the domestic pressure from the government in Berlin to a certain extent. And he's predicted to stay in Thailand, actually, for the rest of the year 2020. I obviously don't know, but this is this is what I hear. Um, however, if, if the king were to return in, say, early 2021 to, to um, Bavaria, that is, right. and protests still carry on in Bangkok, or even worse, there's a bloody crackdown uh, by the military, uh, I think the the agenda will uh, the, the this issue will be on the agenda of Berlin with renewed urgency. I would say, Felix Heiduk, we'll leave it there for the time being. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.